What's up, creatives? So in this video, I'm going to talk about something that I think is flying under the radar, and that is Responses API. I'm going to specifically talk about it in regards to automation, like make.com or N8N. Now, Respace, Res now, Responses API is going to replace the Assistant API. And I've always been a fan of the Assistant API because of the control it gives you. But what they've done with Responses API is that they, they've they kept the level of control while making it easier and more powerful and basically adding more capabilities. So here's a quick look at what we're going to create using the Responses API. And this is simply, I'm adding an estate and I'm getting back the capital and the message. And so you can see here, I'm getting back the capital of the state and the feedback that says the capital of Maine is Augusta. And here is the actual state. So simple automation here, but I think it will demonstrate what we can do with the responses API. Now, let's take a look what OpenAI says about responses API. Okay, so according to OpenAI, the responses API is an advanced interface generating model responses, supports text image, supports text and image inputs, and has text outputs. The number one thing here is that it extended capabilities with built-in tools and so we can look at the built-in tools we can see file search was which is looking at your vector store web search computer use and more and the and more is what we're going to focus in on so the and more includes structured outputs function calling and conversation state in this video, I'm specifically looking at structured output. And I want to explain structured output because it's one of those tools that's not talked about. But when you're doing any type of automation where you need to interact with the with the learning with with the language model, if you're doing anything where you need to interact with the language model and then move that output into a field or variable structured output is a is the best way to go so let's take a look at structured output so we can get an example of what i'm talking about here okay so i have a wine tutor and this wine tutor helps the user learn how to select the best wine based on some situations or anything like that but regardless we have the instructions for the assistant api and here are the instructions, and this is how it's going to grade the response and grade the justification for the response. There are no structured output. That's why it's wine tutor, no structure. So I'm going to give it the question that the user is getting, and then we're getting the student responses here. So the student is responding with a Pino from Oregon while this should be a Cabernet from Napa Valley. Okay, so that's the best answer. So let's go ahead and run this without the structured output. All right, so you can see that we got the response and we got, we got the tone of the response. So we get the seven points here. We get the new points here. Uh, we, okay, so we get points here for here we get three points for this and we should get a total point score but we didn't but you can see that we did get some we did get an output but it's unstructured now let's go ahead and do this exact same answer with a structured output and by a structured output if we go down here to my JSON format this is the structured output that we're looking for so we're looking for all of these things and what we want the assistant to bring back is a feedback, a grape score, a justification, and a total score. And the best grape and the best region. 
Okay, so that's what we want back. Now, I probably should have explained to say add the grape score and the justification together together to get the total score, but I didn't do that, but let's see if it can pick up on that little nuance. So the exact same question and answer, we run it. And as you see, we're getting a JSON format. We get the JSON format we get a grape score of seven, we get the justification of three, and that equals a total score of 10. So the model was smart enough to add both of them without me telling it, but that is something you may want to think about. But the idea here is, is that we have these fields, so if we're using a database, a CRM, any type of tracking or learning module, we can then just transfer the this output into the variable that we need and it makes it much easier to work with this output than to work with this output that is the power of structured output so let's see how this works in make.com and let's build this example okay so in make.com i'm going to build this example here and i'm going to start this tool and these three tools here these essentially represent webhooks. So this will be the webhook coming in from whatever system we are, we're working with. And this is the webhook response that we would generally have with all of the outputs. Okay, but working inside of make.com, I like to work with tools and variables here just so I can kind of see everything before I start building web, webhooks. So I'm going to add in a basic trigger and we're going to call this meal and we're going to say shark with summer veggies. Okay. So that's the meal we're having. Now responses API does not have a node in make.com yet. So typically with open AI, we would just come in and we would come here and select it and we can see message and assistant, use a completion model, transfer structured data. So we can look at all of these different options here uh, and possibly you could just use an open AI, just this format here. And probably, let's go ahead and find out if this works just for a, instead of an ATTP request, let's use this one right here just to test it out. Okay, so here is what we want. We want to go with, we need the link. So we're going to post to the responses, and it is a post. The header is... Yeah, see, this isn't really going to work. So I'm looking here, I, I'm seeing that it won't work. So we're gonna go with our standard HTTP request because that, that format is not gonna work and I'm gonna show you why. So we need a standard make request. And we can place in our link here it's going to be a post and this is where we build the headers because what we need is authorization and we need the bearer and the API key here. So we need the bearer and the API key here and the body type is raw content JSON. Okay. Now let's look at what the request is set up and when we're sending this request, let's take a look at what this looks like. So if you're not familiar with JSON, JSON is just really a structure, a lightweight structure of working with data bet with computers between markdown files and JSON files. When it comes to automation, when it comes to AI, you should learn how to work with markdown files and with JSON files. But right here, we coming in and we're just saying, here's the model, we're using a GP GPT 4.0. We can also use a reasoning model. I think O3 Mini will work here. The input, 
And this is where we're going to pull in our information from our other node. So we're going to have that uh, meal here. And it's just saying, I'm eating this. What's the best wine for this meal? Justify your answer. And then it has text. And this is when we look at how this is going to be structured, you'll understand why we need to parse two JSON parses because here is the first part, this text. So it's bringing back text. And so it's looking at all of this as text. Inside of the text is a JSON schema. So once we pull the text and parse it as JSON, then we have a JSON schema that we can pull here. That is the reason why we do this. But here's our schema, the properties, and here's one field, the feedback. It's a string, and we're just telling it what this string is for. The next field is wine. That's a string, and we're saying the description, name the grape variety. And then we have the region, what region should the wine be from? And then we have required. So required here, these are the three fields that we're gonna pull from. So we could actually pull more, more data from the JSON, but in a certain sense, essence, we may only need these three, even though we pull back five, but this is what we're using. And then it has instructions. So instructions is like a system prompt. And it's just saying, you're, you know, here's the role you're gonna play. You're gonna give us a justification and uh, for the meal that we're providing. Justification for the wine. All right, so we're going to copy this. And I'm using Visual Studio Code. We come here. I'm not just gonna paste because if I paste, from Visual Studio Code, it comes in looking like this. And that's hard to work with. So I'm gonna go paste special. And now you can see that it comes in structured the way I like. So we have an output from the meal. Now, if you don't see this, if nothing comes up, what you have to do is run this first node. Because as you're gonna, as you're gonna see here, as we add nodes, it doesn't really look at the information from the previous node until you've actually ran it. But we're gonna pull this meal in and we're gonna take the run the clock from here and we're gonna run it. Now that we've ran it, if we look at the, here's our input, but here's the output. And you can see the output just has data. So it has all of this data. We need, we need this output text. So we need to parse this data. And that is the first JSON parse. Delete that. We're going to... So the first JSON parse is to parse the data. Okay. So if we run it, You can see here, we've parsed the data. Now the output is in a JSON format. But now what we need, we just took the data and put it in a JSON format. We need the output. That output text, this is what we need. So that's where the second parse JSON comes from. And so we have this parse on, and we go to output, content, and we need the text. So you can see we have the output, the content, and the text. We save that. And from here, we could put in a webhook and if we were to Let's say we run this again. This is the only thing I don't like about make.com is that I have to run this. Okay, let's look at this output now. So here's the output. So you can see we have feedback, wine, and region. Now what I did, I used my tool 
to do this, but if I had a webhook, we can show you what that looks like in a second here. But this is what we come back with, and if needed, I just use some tools to kind of like get the variables. So let's say if I wanted to get a variable, I would come here and then say, okay, I just want the feedback. And now I'm just getting the feedback from this section here. So if we run it one more time, here is the feedback, a Chardonnay from Burgundy. I do want to show you what it looks like with a webhook. So I'm going to save this. This is what it looks like. You can see we have our make request HTTP. We have our JSON, our two JSON files that parse everything out, output, content, text. But the webhook is structured as a JSON file. And the reason we're doing this is because we have to now, we have to also send this information back to our app, our CRM, or training module. We need to send that back and we're gonna send it back as a JSON. So that way we can actually identify the fields and populate the fields with the right data. This allows you to really create web applications and reduce the amount of hallucinations that you get from a large language model. So I don't know why people don't talk about um, structured output as much as they should, but I use them all the time, mainly because I'm using it for training and for it to really pass information back and forth. So I use them quite a bit, uh, which is why I use the Assistant API all the time. So this is just replacing the Assistant API and if you can imagine the power that this one node will have, that you can send this node off to do a file search, to do a web search, do all of that and bring it back as structured output, I, I imagine that this is gonna be pretty powerful. Um, all right, that's it, I'm out.